we are, the Zen Video Journal, episode 45. Thanks for joining. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about that I uh, did this week with uh, my music and the WOTS podcast. So, on the podcast, we had Dirty Dirty. And at this point, um, it was, I feel like it's the best podcast I had done so far. Uh, for a few reasons, I felt like the conversation was really good. I felt like the um, using the mics made it sound better, and um, I you know the quality of it's better. So you know just those things in the process of it, you know it's just like you know it, Ian Forrester was um, you know and I didn't realize so they were ref referencing Harper as Harper. I didn't realize he was also an Ian. Didn't know it was Ian Harper. Um, I would have made some jokes about the fact they were both named Ian, but I didn't um, know that. <laughs> so that was interesting to kind of figure that out afterward. But um, Ian Forrester, very talkative and very like you know easy to talk to essentially. So and then oh they both were really, but um, um, Forrester was the more uh, more vocal of the two. So it was just uh, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Um, check it out. Uh, of course, I'll post the link. Um, I can't think of anything else specific. I'm sure there are some specific things to think about, but I'm not, I, I haven't been writing down topics like I said I was going to be, but um, I need to start doing that again because I've had, like, there's been so much to think about over the last week with the musical journey that I'm on uh, that just is, I would have loved to have talked about, but I'll see what ends up happening here. Um... I'd recorded so what that the the last podcast was the last one I had and I actually recorded two podcasts today today Sunday that I'm recording this and um so I have a couple more in the can now for the next couple of weeks and I just got done one with um Rachel and Patrick Galactic um and uh it was good it was different because and it was like I'll tell I'll talk more about it obviously when the time comes, but I was having some technical difficulties, and I've been listening back to the recordings of it, and it, it, I'm, st I need to learn, now that I'm using the mics, so the one thing, so one thing I did was, on the last couple, I noticed that if they were too close to the mics, I'd get the popping of the, like, the big P sounds and stuff on the mics, and I need to get better pop filters, and I haven't done that yet, so I told them to kind of talk on an angle and I think that was a bad idea um because there's not as a consistent um th thickness of audio sometimes and so and then I had some other technical difficulties where like it seemed to like the signal didn't even come across so it just was weird but um I'm learning I'm learning that's all I can say about that is I'm learning how to do it getting better at it um had a show had a couple shows this week for me, first we played, the Zim and Iraq played at the Skylark Cafe, and um, it was interesting because we were thrown on the bill late, um, and it didn't seem like there was a lot of, it seemed like the whole show was kind of thrown together late, I, I was, so it was like, there wasn't really anybody there, um, which was a bummer, of course, and then there wasn't a lot of promotion for it, um, so that was kind of a bummer, too. And it was like, it kind of reinforced for me a little bit more of really trying to be more selective about the shows we play. Because, you know, I you know I, I want to grow our audience. But if there's nobody there to grow it to, it makes it hard to grow. You know? So it's just one of those things. But, I, I, but it's like a hard balance because I want to play. You know, it was an opportunity to play. It was a Friday night. You know, but it was at the Skylark. And the Skylark's hard to get people to from what I can tell. And, you know, I talked to the sound guy after the show and he was saying the same things. It's like, why do people not like to, why do people think the Skylark is so far away? You know, uh, when it's, you know, it's really not, it's just right off the freeway, but I guess it's just far enough that people think it's West Seattle. So it kind of deters them from wanting to go out to it. But, uh, so that was interesting. It was a really fun show. Um, I think we played good. I I talked to another guy that was playing that night. Um, 
about it, and I felt like my guitar was out of tune a little bit more. And when 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 my when my guitar goes out of tune, if it goes out of tune while I'm playing, or if it went out of tune at one point, and we start in on one of our chunks of songs because we don't we don't play a song and then stop anymore. We play like three songs in a row that just kind of all get thrown together because of the sequencing we're doing. I can't stop and tune it. I just gotta play through it. So if I notice it's out of tune, the beginning of it's like three songs I'm gonna be playing out of tune. So that was a little bit. It made it messed with my head a little bit. But I talked to another guy that was watching the show, and he said it didn't. I mean, maybe he noticed, but he said it didn't matter. So it like, um, kind of made me feel better, and got some good response from our show. So, so that was that was good. The sound guy really dug it. He came up. He, we played there before, and he was like, "Man, you guys must have been practicing, because you sound a lot better." you know, this time, or something, like, to, to that effect, so that was really cool to hear, um, we had, I got to play a show on Saturday night with Passion Party, um, but, I don't, I'm not sure if I knew it last week, if I mentioned it last week, but, um, they asked me to play saxophone, and it went out, it was so fun, it was so amazing, I'm thankful for the, you know, this new intention I have with my saxophone, and playing it more, and, um, I, it just felt really good, I, and, I was able to learn their songs well enough to make it happen. And what was really awesome for me was the response I got after the show. A lot of people came up to me and was like, the saxophone was amazing or like really good and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, okay, that's awesome. I want to put more saxophone in the Zim and A-Rock as well. Um, now that I'm feeling more confident about it. And uh, it just... I'm I'm trying to listen to what the people are telling me a little bit, you know, so that's an intention there that I'm gonna try to do. I got a. I really feel like there was a lot more I want to talk about. I should have written stuff down, but I can't remember now what I want to talk. And it's getting late too. Um, but I, I, uh, I have a show coming up. We have a show. The Zimmy Rock are playing this Friday, at um the town it's called in Tacoma it's that battle of bands I've been talking about I still have um let's see are they in this pocket right here I still have the tickets tickets right here they say Admiral Benbow on them but the venue got changed um if anybody wants a ticket they're ten dollars um, it's in Tacoma um I haven't sold any tickets nobody and I don't know I don't know how I've been telling people I'm making little videos on the internets, and I've been telling people about it, but nobody's asked for a ticket, so I'm not sure how to create that. Um, but we're going to play the show. The way they're doing it, you sh we show up, and then I guess they lost. I guess it was supposed to be like six bands we're going to play, but be maybe in the fact that they had to change the venue, they lost a bunch of bands, so now there's only three bands playing. And um, they're going to draw the, the order of the bands like the day of. Which is kind of interesting. I don't know. I kind of I feel like they should have made it more of like a showcase show and just had the the show set and the order set rather than the battle um, for what they're trying. I don't for what they're trying to do because it's it's put on by the Law Dogs music thing and um I, I just feel there's like a part of me you know that feels funny about the fact that it's. I can't tell anybody when we're playing, and it, it just, you know, and I, because it's moved to Tacoma now, it kind of doesn't matter as much because there isn't as many people down there that are interested in coming, as far as I know. Like, all my friends and family live in Seattle, so that's really who I'm drawing from for to get to these kind of things, but, um, but I'm just doing it. I'm just going to have fun. <laughs> it's the bottom line. Just try to follow their rules. They have a bunch of rules about showing up and how they want the, the show to go. So hopefully we'll follow the rules well enough. And we'll just play our set and have some fun. And hopefully they like us. Um, and hopefully there'll be some people there that haven't heard us before that will then sign our mailing list and do all that kind of good stuff. So that's, you know, that's just the thing. So if you're in Tacoma or if you're interested in coming down to Tacoma, you want to buy a ticket from me, you can do it. Just get a hold of me. Um... Ten dollars, and then uh, you know we'll make it happen. It's Friday. The show. Um, I, I don't actually don't. I'll put the link to the event page. I think the show starts at like eight, probably. Um, if they load in, 
Yeah, since the venues change, it's, I'm not sure what has changed in terms of loading and all that stuff, but I'll have to look it up. But I'll link the event page. So as far as you're concerned, if you're interested in coming, you'll be able to get all the information off the event page, off the Facebook event page. Um, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that for today. You know, as always, subscribe. Oh, one thing I did, I started to do. I don't. I I, I signed up for Snapchat, and I honestly don't understand that thing yet. So I'm gonna stick with it and see if there's some way I can use Snapchat to promote the music in a way that works. But um, as far as I can tell, it's just it's it seems like a lot of work. I don't I don't know if you use Snapchat, but so far it's like you have to in order to see what you want to look at, you have to like hold the screen down and then you know make sure your finger's not in the way of it. And then if you let your finger up, it goes away. So it's like, it just seems like a lot of work to be able to use it rather than something like Facebook or Twitter where you get access it, access to it. And it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I know Snapchat's really big with the younger kids, it seems like right now, but it'll be interesting to see how that evolves um, and if there's a way that I can take advantage of it for my music and get anybody else interested in it, what we're doing. Um, I guess I'll leave it at that. I'm, I'm pretty tired. My brain's kind of um, stopped now. So um, check it out. Subscribe to the feed. Come to the show on on Friday. That would be awesome. And subscribe to the iTunes feed for the podcast. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. This is the Zim's Video Journal, episode 45.